the city of Troy had allied troops from all over the region. The goal was to prepare a great counterattack against the Greek troops besieging the city. On the horizon, a huge contingent of reinforcements emerged. It was the army of the Dardanians, led by old Anchises, brother of King Priam, and his son Aeneas, who commanded his father's soldiers on the battlefield. From the top of the walls, the population waved and celebrated the arrival of the Dardanians, shouting the name of Aeneas, who is reputed to be a great warrior. Aeneas had divine blood in his veins, and the prophecies indicated that he would have a glorious future. Aeneas was the son of Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and love, who always watched over the safety of her mortal son. The goddess of love could arouse passions in the hearts of men and even gods. Zeus, the supreme god of Olympus, had excessive passion in his heart, making him an easy target for the influence of the goddess of love and her son Eros. His love affairs with deities and beautiful mortals were countless. This aroused the fury of Hera, his wife. Aphrodite was pleased to know that even the lord of Olympus could not resist her powers. Zeus decided that Aphrodite should taste her own poison and forced Eros to use his arrows to make Aphrodite fall in love with a mortal. The goddess fell in love with Anchises, a member of the Trojan royal family, who was tending her flock. Aphrodite, properly disguised, visited the Trojan nobleman's tent during the night, and he was astonished by the visit of such a beautiful woman. Anchises suspected that that beautiful woman was a goddess and knew that it was inappropriate for a mere mortal to wish to possess a deity. The humility shown by Anchises aroused even more passion in Aphrodite. The goddess pretended to be a princess from the region of Phrygia, who had been instructed by the gods to marry the Trojan nobleman and establish a strong alliance between the two peoples. Convinced that this was the will of the gods, Anchises gave in to Aphrodite's charms. The couple had a night of intense love. At daybreak, Anchises awoke and saw the goddess without any disguise. He was astounded at such beauty, but a great fear quickly ravaged his heart. He remembered Actaeon, who dared to spy on the beautiful goddess Artemis while she was bathing. That sight caused the goddess of the hunt to impose a terrible punishment on him. Aphrodite calmed the noble Trojan, saying that he should not worry, for he had committed no sin. Everything that had happened to him had been the will of the gods, and to her, Anchises and his descendants were very important. The goddess assured him that from that union, the heir to Troy would be born, and under his leadership, the seed of a new nation would be planted that would bring all the opposing ones to their knees. Aphrodite knew that her union with a mere mortal would forever be a stain on her reputation, and so she asked Anchises never to reveal the true mother of her son Aeneas, the fruit of this tainted union. Anchises kept the secret for many years. Time passed, and while fraternizing with his friends and relatives, because of alcohol, Anchises boasted about his son Aeneas and revealed the prophecy that spoke about the glorious future of his son, all thanks to his divine mother, the goddess Aphrodite. Zeus, upon learning that Anchises was boasting of his union with a goddess, hurled one of his thunderbolts at the noble Trojan. Anchises survived, but was crippled for life. His son with the goddess of beauty and love grew up and his strength and beauty reflected his divine origin. Hector and Paris were very pleased with the arrival of the Dardanians, but because of the rumors of the prophecy predicting the glory of Aeneas, King Priam distrusted Aeneas, for he feared that he would take over the throne from his sons. However, he also knew that without Aeneas and his men, defeating the Greeks would be an almost impossible task.